Good morning guys, what's going on? I am dropping a pinfish here. We are fishing out of beautiful Panama City, Florida with Captain Josh of Heritage Excursions. And we've been fishing now for two minutes <laughs> and we've already caught, what, three or four red snappers on the boat already? We ran out 35 miles and first stop, already three, four fish in the boat. Let's see how long this is gonna take. I don't think it's gonna take very long. Oh, oh. Oh, Brooke's on. Yeah. yeah, she got one on. Wow, first bait down. We've been here for a minute. That bait was on bottom for like two seconds. Eating, Brooke. David's hooked up in the back, yeah. They, they're definitely gonna eat the jig. We got David on in the back. Oh yeah, I got bit on the way down. Nice, Brooke. <laughs> First fish of the day, baby. I think that's my first red snapper, actually. Heck, yeah. right for me. So this is what average, average size you'd say? Yeah, it's a nice fish. But you want bigger? I'm hoping for bigger later. Heck Doesn't yeah. get much better than that. First it's a red snapper. Fish. How many of these can we keep a person? Two per person. Two per person. Okay. So we're hoping for Can't some bigger ones. So we're putting the smaller ones back. I'm gonna let him go. They and he goes home. <laughs> yeah, let me grab you a bait. You know the best part was is that I got Ray hooked up right behind <laughs> really? you guys. I see we're releasing that one. <laughs> we're in 200 feet of water. So I'm gonna drop to the bottom. Once I hit bottom, I'm gonna reel up a little bit. And then we'll see what happens. Okay. Now we just wait. So we're fishing in 200 feet and we have the trolling motor with the spot lock on so we don't have to worry about anchoring here. And we're sitting right over the spot that we want to be on. Oh. Are you getting a little nervous? Mr. David hooked up in the back. Oh yeah. It's a better fish. Go, oh, go. oh, oh, oh. Drilled him, Brucky. Oh! oh! Stop, he'll come back. If there's anything left, that snapper will come back for him. I don't know if I have anything left. Every starts biting, just start turning the handle slow and easy. Oh, <laughs> missed. All right, another red snapper. They're all in that like 18 inch to 20 inch range right now. Beautiful. All right, he hooked up again on my second fish. I missed that second one, but oh, did you see that? Yep. Hook, hook just pulled. Hook just pulled. Oh man. Let me show you guys something really cool. So this is Plassy Dip on the weights. A lot of times when you're fishing with these weights and you're bringing them in, as hard as you try not to hit the boat with them, you hit the boat. And this saves your boat. Super smart. Are we dropping? Yeah, go ahead. Alrighty, so we're dropping. This time, I have a cigar minnow on. You haven't fished a cigar yet? Um, I have, but I haven't gotten bit. <laughs> Put that yellow thing on there. You're ready. Yep. Gotta put my lifesaver on. Oh, wow. Look at that. David oh, on. David's on. Got him. He, he just okay. Bottom. Put that rod in here. I promise you, you'll thank me. So that's a too, too small that you'd want to keep, right? Yeah, he'd keep, but you want one a little better than that. So we've moved spots a couple times now and Captain Josh has been fishing out here his entire life. He has so many spots out here from himself finding them or from even his dad back in the day finding them. So you go to a spot, if they're not biting there or you can't find them there, you pull up, move to the next spot. Oh, oh yeah, them. this is the one. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Got him. I told you I bust your bait, Brookie. <laughs> Victor gave him a little kiss before he sent him down that time. I think this is bigger than my first one. Oh, he's not as big as my first one. Ray, try that two hook here. Here we go. You know, so I noticed most of the fish we're catching in their stomachs are not blown up. So we're in a little less than 200 foot of water and we're not really horsing them up. These have to be 16 inches to keep. He would probably be legal. Oh, right? he's definitely legal. But but we want him a little bit bigger than that. We're looking for the bigger ones. Let them go and let them grow. They're a fish that goes down real easy after you catch them. You don't have to worry about yeah, them not surviving after you release them. 
Oh. That's not a little fish. Whoa. Hey, oh, nice. That's a big fish. Oh, what nice. the? It's okay. Be easy. Be easy. Just don't. Pick wow, up. Brooke. Pick up. Pick up. <laughs> you might have ran you in the bottom already. That was big. She still got it on though. You catch gags here too sometimes? Uh -huh. Oh, you Holy think that's crap, what it might be? This is freaking huge. You better put it back in your hips and get some leverage on it. I think I need to push this oh, thing on Oh, big head shakes, big head shakes. There you go. Come on, Brookie. You got it, girl. You've caught them big ones before. Wow. Heck yeah. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. If, if Josh is excited, you know it's a good one. I was getting my butt kicked at first, but... They do that. <laughs> He's not ready to give up yet. You got him turn, babe. Oh, nice. Watch, this is gonna be your 30 pound gag right here. And didn't even expect it. Those are aggressive head shakes. I don't know where. Might be the toothy kind. Oh, yeah? You catch sharks here too? Oh yeah. If that's what it takes to catch my grouper, then I'm ready. Big old sandbar, right, Glick? Yep. Big sandbar. It always amazes me when you hook them right perfectly in the corner of the mouth like that. He's, A he, big toothy critter and that's exactly where you get them. He has another hook in his mouth, you see it? An old hook. That's just your well, armor, rookie. That whipped my butt. But we're ready to get something that we can throw on the cooler and not a shark. <laughs> I just can't stay away from the sharks. No. Oh! <laughs> he wasn't kidding as soon as it hit bottom. You weren't paying attention to that one. Little bee liners. Much easier to crank in than a shark, <laughs> that's for sure. I think I got more than one. I'm gonna say I got two. One or two? Two. Oh, you got an Almaco jack. That's why I fought so hard. Oh, B-liner. That might be a weird Yeah. Or a lesser or a banded? It's definitely not an Almaco. No. Say goodbye. See ya. Back home. This dude's coming home with us. You want that That's dinner. Dinner right there. That's one of many dinners. Taco meat. <laughs> Beautiful little bee liner. That's a nice one. That's fish tacos right there. Oh yeah. There he is. So now we are using a chicken rig with cut up pieces of, oh, I think I lost it. Oh, no, no you got them. With cut up pieces of Boston mackerel, just little chunks. Two hooks. As soon as you hit bottom, they're chewing. Chewing. Beautiful. Get your baby dog and get right back to it. 16 so far? 16. Our limit is 10 per person. Those, 10 per right? person. So we could keep 40 of them. And when you're catching fish that small, they don't have a ton of meat on them. So 40 sounds like a lot of fish, but when you actually take all the fillets off and see how much you have left, it doesn't end up being that much. And you're splitting it against, uh, you know, amongst four right. people, four different families. I mean, 10 fish, you know, five people, easy, one dinner. Yeah, especially if Brookie's cooking. That ain't no kidding. We watch those cooking videos all the time. What do you got? Bee liner. You got one or two? Just one, one hook, so. Oh. <laughs> well, that would be pretty cool if yep. you could catch two, huh? That would be. That would be a trick. <laughs> nice. These bee liners, a lot of times you'll like there'll be red groupers on the, underneath them. Yeah. Like on the bottom. Biggest one of the day. That's it. Nice job. Yeah. I'm not used to fishing on a boat with such a big um, gunnel. gunnel. And I can't see my fish till it's right there. <laughs> Another one. Another gorgeous bee liner. That one's got a little more yellow in it, see? This yellow one? It's got racing stripes. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, that's a See stud. that hole in his that mouth? Awesome. Where that hook was pulling on him? 
They are so tender lips. Hold that way. So, all it would have took, just a little bit of slack. A little slack. All. That's why you always got to keep your line tight because you can lose fish that way. See, you ripped his whole jaw off there. Very tender. Yeah, get him, get him by the good side. That's an awesome beat. That's definitely. Relax. That's definitely the biggest beeliner I've ever seen. Look at that stud. Johnny. That's a nice one. Now that's a couple tacos there. <laughs> David's hooked up again. Oh yeah. And a good snapper? Yeah, it feels like a pretty good one. You ain't gonna believe this. Grouper. Is that a, oh, a grouper. I caught that thing way up in the water. Oh, oh yeah. Close. I caught him like eight cranks off the bottom. Oh yeah? Yep. That dude will keep. Oh yeah. First grouper of the day. Nice job. Thank Beautiful. You. Oh. There he is, Josh. Oh, all right. Getting yeah. stuck. Nice right that's a big guy. That's, that's a big, that's a big, right there. <laughs> big old snapper. Wow. Big, that's, that's the one. Oh, my Heck goodness. Yeah. That's all stud right wow, there. Wow, look at that thing. Nice. That's the ones we came after, guys. Heck yeah, that's a beast. So earlier when Captain Josh was saying that those red snappers were too small to keep and he wanted to wait to get bigger ones, that's what he was talking about, those big boys like that. That's the ones you want and let the smaller ones go. Alright guys, as you can see we are back home and we had so much action that I'm going to have to make this video into two parts. So this is part one where I'm going to be cooking up the bee liners and I'm going to be cooking them whole. So I'm about to start filleting those up and then I'll meet you in the kitchen to cook them up. But we caught some epic fish so make sure you stay tuned for part two. It'll be coming up in a couple days. And I just wanted to make one comment. When Victor and I go on trips and we bring home fish, we never worry about it because we have these awesome coolers. Right now the fish are on top of the ice because we wanted to show them to you. But normally the, these fish are covered in ice. The ice stays for days. We don't have to worry about the fish going bad. And these angle coolers are absolutely amazing. If you guys are interested in any of their products, you can save 8% with code Landshark. We absolutely love them. Now let's get to flying. All right guys, time to clean up the bee liners. Now tonight for dinner, I'm gonna be cooking them almost whole. I'm gonna scale them take the heads off and then we're gonna fry them whole, leaving the bones in, leaving the tail on. Victor did this one time with a yellow tail, so I'm stealing his recipe a little bit. And it was absolutely delicious and I think these fish will be perfect for that. So what I'm going to do to scale is use an actual scaler, but you can do this with a fork. Literally take a fork or a spoon and you have to go the opposite way, way of the scales and they'll just come flying off. So to scale it, you're gonna hold the tail like this Take your scaler, your spoon, the back of a butter knife, whatever you're using, and you're gonna go the opposite way. Now, the scales are gonna go flying, so just be aware of that. You're gonna end up with a bunch of scales in your hair, especially if you're doing a lot. Now, we catch vermilions out here where we live, but I've never seen vermilions as big as the ones that we were catching in Panama City. Now, I wanna give a huge thank you to Captain Josh of Heritage Excursions for taking Victor and I out fishing. So Victor and I had never been to Panama City before and we absolutely loved it and I cannot wait to go back. They have an awesome fishery there. They have a great offshore fishery as well as a really cool inshore fishery, redfish, trout, and Panama City is also a very cool town. We got to go to this local shop called Sun Jammers that carries that salty swagger gear that you guys saw us wearing this whole trip. And they have a bunch of cool local gear there. They even have like local hot sauces and salsas and things like that. Very cool place. Went to some neat restaurants. We stayed at a really cool Airbnb that seemed like it was in like the middle of 
everything. Everything seemed like it was only five minutes away from the Airbnb we stayed in. So if you guys are interested in heading to Panama City, everything we did, I'll have it linked in the description so you guys have an idea of what there is to do there. I got most of the scales off this guy. Make sure you get them all because if you leave scales on your dish, that can make your dish go from like 100 to zero real quick. So you wanna make sure you get all the scales off the belly, by the tail, cause you're leaving the tail on, but I am gonna take the head off. So all up by this top fin, the dorsal fin, at the top of the head, around the gill, this little fin, the throat. You wanna get all the scales off. Then you're gonna take your hose and make sure you don't rinse your scale or off the table. I've definitely done that before. And then you're just gonna spray your fish off. Okay, so now I'm gonna gut the fish as well as take off the head. So I'm gonna start at the anal opening and just cut up to the head. And then we're gonna take all these guts out. Just stick your hand in there, take them all out. You don't want the guts in there. Panama City was actually hit by a hurricane back in October of 2018, Hurricane Michael, that absolutely like devastated the panhandle and they are coming back better than ever. And they, every single person that we met on this trip was awesome. They love their town, they love where they live. There's so much culture and everything in this little city. So, if you've never been to Panama City before, and you're thinking about going, I highly suggest it. Captain Josh offers a bunch of different fishing trips. We fish for a full day, but he offers half day trips. He offers trips to the sandbar to hang out with your family. He offers half trips where you go out fish for half a day come to the sandbar and he'll cook for you he'll cook the fish that you caught he just offers a bunch of different things so i will have his information all linked down in the description he's been fishing out there since he was like born going out fishing with his dad and his mom commercial fishing and everything so he knows a lot about panama city and the fishing there so make sure you guys check them out. I will have all of his information linked down below. Now that I took the guts out, I'm gonna take the head off. So I'm gonna go just around the head like this. You could cook this with the head on, but since these fish are kind of so big, my pan that I'm gonna be cooking them in isn't that big. So I want the whole thing to fit in the pan. So that's why I'm chopping the heads off. But you could certainly cook it with the head on. There is some head meat in there. Now, once I cut completely around the head, I should be able to just break this head off. Just like that. And this is gonna be perfect crab trap bait for my grandma. So save that for her. I just wanna make sure I got everything out of here. This is like a stomach lining. I don't want that in there. So just rip all that out. Everything comes out pretty easily. The final thing to do is give it a good squirt in there. So there is the finished product. This is ready to be covered in flour and some seasonings and thrown in a frying pan. So I'm gonna flape the rest of these fish, take a shower to get all these scales off and out of my hair, and then I will meet you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, and welcome back to the kitchen. So we have showered and no longer have scales on ourselves. So now it is time to season up our beautiful vermilion snappers and I actually took kitchen scissors and chopped off the other fins that I had left on. So now the only thing left on is the tail fin. Then I also took a knife and I scored the skin so that all the flavor gets to get all nice into the meat. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, before we season our fish, we're going to open up this History Class Brewing Company beer. Not only did we bring home some Panama City fish, we also br brought home some Panama City beer. They just opened this new brewery there and we got to go in and try a bunch of different beers and everything was absolutely amazing. They had great bar snacks there too. We had a really fun time. If you're going to Panama City, check them out. It's called History Class because there's so much history in there. There's so many different parts of the town throughout the throughout the years that they kept. Like Captain Josh's dad's back of his old boat is part of the bar. It's just a really cool place. If you guys go there, you gotta check it out. So Victor and I are gonna share this because this is a really big beer. I know this isn't your typical beer glass, so don't hate on me. 
but I think this is called a, a crowler. Is that what it's called, Vic? <laughs> Beats me. I think it's called a crowler. It's like 32 ounces. Here you go, Vic. This is called hibiscus wheat. This is called classes in session. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, moving on to the fish. First thing I'm going to do is salt and pepper it on both sides. Okay, I'm all over. Flip them over, salt and pepper on this side. And I also um, took some paper towels and tried to dry them off real good. At least to the best that you can, try to dry them off. Now we have this glass um, baking dish here. And we're going to take flour. And then cornstarch. You kind of want equal amounts of flour, equal amounts of cornstarch. Again, this is a Victor recipe. So if you guys haven't seen him make that, it was with yellowtail. And he made like a really delicious like sauce on it that I'm not gonna be making tonight. But if you wanna check that out, I will have his video linked down below because it was absolutely amazing. But I'm just taking the short way out and doing them fried not making the sauce, but mine's kind of like an appetizer. And Victor's making the main course, which is grouper. So this is paprika. This is chili powder. Next, coriander. And finally, garlic powder. And just try to mix it up. Ran out of chili powder in the little glass. Brought out the big guns. This is your main seasoning, is your chili powder. Or should I say main spice? Okay, that color looks better now. Doesn't look like snow anymore. Looks like dirty snow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cooking with Brooke. <laughs> we like to describe our flour as dirty snow here. Okay, now for the fun part. Gotta get your hands all dirty. So, we're taking our fish and we're coating these babies really good. You wanna get that all inside everywhere. All in the mm -hmm. cavity in there inside all of those scores in the fish that you made. This is what you want him to look like, like he rolled around and made a... Snowball. No. Snowman. Sno no. Snowfish. <laughs> okay. Oh, what uh, what's it called? A snow angel. No, a snow fish. Okay, a snow fish. All right guys, so it is time to start frying. We're in the backyard on our Camp Chef sidekick. We have a cast iron skillet there that's filled like halfway with some peanut oil. Now I have six, six pieces of fish. I'm hoping to fit two in at a time. So we're gonna go with the biggest one and the smallest one. Oh, baby. I'm really happy that I didn't leave the heads on because they wouldn't have fit. Nope. Now this is gonna be perfect. So obviously the smaller one's gonna cook faster than the big one, but that's okay. We'll just keep an eye on it. This one done. So one of these is hibiscus wheat, so it's kind of fruity. And then this one is called session ale. It tastes more like a lighter beer. 
I think I want the lighter beer. I want the fruity. Oh my god, yeah. I wasn't expecting They're very light. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, man. Crispy and golden brown. It's crazy. What do you think? <laughs> I can't wait to try them. Dad, <laughs> I'm gonna have you and mom split a big one. Okay. So there's for you guys. You can go sit down and split it. Take a nice piece with you. Oh, that looks good. Like you and I can split one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you like this one? Mm hmm. Yeah. Crispy, tasty. Brick and I are going to split one. Everyone's splitting one. And just listen to that crunch. Mm hmm. It's very good. Mm hmm. It's beyond good. It's, it's got crispy chin, like <laughs> crispy skin, like chicken. Yeah. Right? I've made this before, and this is Bricky's first time making it, so. Shout out to you, babe, for being adventurous. Um, if you guys have never had crispy fish skin, not only is it probably the most sustainable way to eat fish, but it's so delicious. You don't waste anything. Everything crisps up. The fish doesn't dry out at all because you're literally deep frying it in oil, but you don't get that really oily flavor. It's very light. It's delicious. Very good. Watch this if you guys have ever been worried about this. The bone. Watch this, this entire spine. Look at that, how cool is that? You're getting all of the meat in between the spine right there. Nothing goes to waste. And this is what you can do. You get all that meat off there. You just pick it apart. There's your spine. And now you got a boneless piece of fish. Rickos, are you gonna try to eat the tail? I said, heck yeah, watch this. It's like a potato chip, like a fish chip. You're gonna like it. Yeah? Mm hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Just chew it good. Mm hmm. Oh, something real. <laughs> it is good. Actually, I'm gonna have a second bite. This vermilion snapper is is done to perfection. It's it's so delicious yeah. and tasty. In, in my opinion, I, I love filleted fish, and you know we're, we're real fish eaters in, in this house. We we eat everything, so I always think everybody could eat filleted fish, but it takes real fish eaters to go around the bones and get all that flavor and be careful. And it's fun once in a while to do it like that. Good job, bro. Thank you. I have something to say to, to jump onto that. We weren't always fish eaters, and that's the important thing is, if you guys are fishermen out there and you've never tried this, take that leap because, I'm not gonna say it's relatively new, we've been doing it for a couple years now, but this is what it's all about, is trying new things, you know, as a fisherman. I want to give another huge thank you to Captain Josh of Heritage Excursions for taking Victor and I out fishing. We had an incredible time, definitely a trip we won't forget. I will have all his charter information in the video description as well as all the places we visited on our trip to Panama City. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.